Hey, good morning, second grade friends. It's Mrs. Starhorst. We're here with our phonics lesson number 41. So let's get started. Our focus today is going to be on some new sight words. Um, before we go over any new sight words, let's go over our letter cards and our picture cards and add in the suffixes as well. So let's just take a look at the letter cards first. This is digraph O O. All right. And repeat, repeat combination W H. Good. Digraph T H. Digraph C K. Good. Repeat. Digraph C H. Combination U R. Combination I R. Combination E R. Combination Q U. Combination A R. And combination O R. All right, nice work. We're going to talk about suffixes now. Um, and this suffix is actually one of our phonics dances, and it's very helpful because it helps you remember that it can have three sounds. Suffix ed, repeat. Good. Suffix ed means it already happened. And it can sound like d, t, or ed. This is suffix s, repeat. Good. Suffix s means more than one. This is suffix less. Good, it means without. And this is suffix ing. And that means it's happening now. And there's also a phonics dance one, um, dance for this one as well. Now let's do our picture cards. All right, say them with me this time. Shark, shh, good. Butter, er. Turtle er, thimble f, dollar er, bird er. Now this ir combination er in the medial position was in a lot of our spelling words last week and seemed to be a little bit of a challenge. So don't forget what we've learned in the past and all these combinations. Chef sh, cheese ch. Anchor k, rose z, duck k. Remember, in the final position, the k sound when following a short vowel in a short word, it's a c and a k. Wagon w, worm er, horse or, doctor er. Star R, quilt qua, whale wa, sheep e, hook u, uh, tooth ooh. All right, friends. All right, we're going to move on to the lesson of the day. First, we're going to take a look. At spelling and high frequency word practice page 41 and it's gonna start with sight words on the top and I wrote these ahead of time so we can kind of get through this um, while focusing and I don't have to keep looking up and down up and down see how it goes today let's take a look um, let's practice some of our sight words that we've already had and let's put our finger next to number one I'd like you to spell could Repeat could. Very good. Could. Um, maybe she could come over to play later. Could. Go ahead and write it. And compare with my answer. All right. Next, I'd like you to repeat number two. Don't repeat. Nice work. Don't forget to put your name on your paper. Don't. Go ahead and write. 
and then take a peek up here. Number three, should repeat. Good, if you knew how to spell could in number one, you should be able to spell should in number three. Go ahead and write. Take a look and compare. If you need to make a change, that's fine. Go ahead and make a change now. And if I go too fast, pause the video while you're making your change. Number four, repeat something. Good. Some and thing create the compound word something. Go ahead and write it. And then compare with mine. Number five is the word there. Repeat there. Now be careful because there's a lot of different kinds of the words there. This one is, this is their pencil there. Go ahead and write it. And then compare with mine. All right, we're on the second column now, number six. Number six is the word there, like a location, over there. Go ahead and repeat there and write it. And take a peek up here at mine. Make sure you have all of those letters. All right, number seven is were. Repeat were. Good. Um, we were in first grade, now we're in second grade. Go ahead and write it. Take a peek up here at mine, number seven. W-E-R-E, -E, were. And number eight is another contraction. Number eight is won't repeat. Good. This one breaks the, wor the rules. Will not is actually won't. Usually contractions use the first word. This one breaks those rules. Go ahead and write. And then check with mine. Don't forget your apostrophe is in the place of the O and not. Number nine is would. Repeat would. Good. If you could spell could and should, you would be able to spell this word would. Go ahead and write it. is not the kind of wood that you put on the fire. It's the kind of wood like, would you please come over here? Go ahead and check. And number 10 is the word your. Your, repeat. Good. This is your paper. Go ahead and write. And then check with mine. All right, these are our sight words that we've been practicing. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to our dictation sentence. Remember what a dictation sentence is. It means simply I'm going to say it and you're going to write it. And keep in mind what are the important parts of a sentence. Well, first we need to remember that it always begins in a, do you remember? Capital letter, a capital letter, very good. A capital letter goes at the beginning of the sentence. We use spaces between our words so we're able to read it clearly. And what should be at the end of a sentence? An ending mark or a punctuation mark. And we have some choices with this. It could be a period if it's a statement or if it is telling you something. It could also be a period if it's a command. A question mark will be if it's asking for information and an exclamation mark will be if you're using an excited or emotional voice. So let's echo this sentence together. The bird sat in an elm tree. Repeat. The bird sat on an elm tree. All right. What kind of punctuation should we put at the end of this sentence? I hope you said period because it's just telling you something. It's a statement, so you're going to use a period. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Here is your first word. Go ahead and repeat the and write it. Make sure it's got a capital T all the way to the top, top, top. Okay. The bird 
Go ahead and write the bird. Sat in. Go ahead and write it. Check with mine. The bird sat in an. Go ahead and write it. Elm tree. And finish that sentence off with a period. Okay. Going back and looking at our sentences, we should be checking for capitalization, spaces between our words. Do our words look the same as Mrs. B's? Are they spelled correctly with I, R, er in the medial position of bird? Sight words should be spelled correctly. Now this word and, we'll talk about a little bit later, it is in place of the word a. Uh. Because elm starts with a vowel e, we don't say a elm tree, we say an elm tree. A uh and an are actually called article words. Okay? All right. We are going to go ahead and let you and your family do the checking and the reading and spelling of these high frequency word box words. And we're going to actually use those sight words we talked about. Um, we're going to do that first. I'm sorry, we're going to talk about some new sight words before we do this sight word part two page. So let's take a look at some new sight words today. Give you a minute to look at these words. Try to make sure it gets right up there so you can see them all. Give you a minute to look at that. Hey, I hope these look familiar to you. Let's read them together. We'll go down the list. Bin, repeat. Good. Bush, does, full, goes, pull, good. Push, put, says with a voiced S, and want. These are going to be our new sight words. Remember, let's talk a little bit about sight words. Sight words are words you have to remember by sight. Very good. The reason you have to remember them by sight is because you can't really finger spell or sound out all the parts of the word because there's unfair positions or parts of the word that breaks the phonics rules. Also, these words are not just words that we memorize by sight, they're called also high frequency words because they're frequent, frequently in our stories and in our books. Okay, so to take a look at those and we will go ahead and look through the flashcards that have these on them. Let's say them together. Ready? Bin, Bush, does, full, goes, pull, push, put, says, and want. Very good. We don't code sight words because of those unfair positions and those unfair rule breakers. And so we're just going to go right straight to using them inside of sentences. Not only do you want to be able to read them with our flashcards, we need to be able to read them inside of sentences and answer questions that include them. So let's take a look at number one. I'm going to do this with an R-U-W, read, underline, and write. What a good reader is able to do is to go back and read again if they need to, underline answers, or find them in your textbook and write complete sentences. So those are all really important things that are going to help you on test day, going to help you while reading, and just going to make you a great, great student. Okay, you can use this in all kinds of different ways. Also, I also, also, I also, I also look for keywords that are going to help me when I'm looking to underline, and I'm going to use the question to restate in my answer. Okay. So number one, mom said, Jim, come in at one o'clock. When will Jim 
come in. Well, hmm, I read, cross that R out. I'm going to look, and you don't have to highlight, I just wanted to show you. The words come in is what I'm asking about. When will Jim come in? And if I look for those words up in the sentence, I could probably find the answer close to it. Let's see. Here's the words come in. I'll go back to the beginning and it says, Jim, come in at one o'clock. There's my answer. When? At one o'clock. So I underlined and now it's my job to write. Write a complete sentence. When will Jim come in? Well, I don't really need when will. Those are question words. I don't need those when I restate the question when I put my answer. So I'm just going to use Jim will come in at 1 o'clock or Jim will, yeah, let's do come in and I'm going to use this right here at 1 o'clock period. So I use the words Jim and come and in. I even actually use the word will so we can use that as well. And I use what I underlined inside of the story. And that's it. I read, I underlined, and I wrote. Please pause the video now. I'm going to go ahead and let you finish the rest of this page and then come back to me and I'll go over the answers with you. Good luck friends. All right, welcome back, kiddos. Let's take a look at this page. Ooh, there we go. So what I tried to do, and you can pause this when I'm done talking and take a look at all of the answers and check your work. I did my RUWs. I know that's important. But you don't just decorate the page with RUWs and cross them out. You have to actually do them. You have to read. You have to underline and then write your answers and use that as a checklist as you go. I also highlighted words that I thought in my question I could uses keywords to find the answer around it. I crossed out question words that I didn't need when restating in order to get my complete sentences. Okay, So all of these are going to help you be a great reader and be able to use those sight words while you're reading and while you're answering questions. If you need more practice, go ahead and do the back of this page. I'm going to get this really nice and centered and you can pause me and check your work. All right, see you next time kiddos. All right, go ahead and pause.